Hello there, Jensen Vars here. I really wanted to make a video towards the end of the year to celebrate and to cheer with you together all of the progress that we all made in the solo RPG hobby as a whole. It's been a nice year for the hobby. I think there's lots of newcomers. There has been lots of big publishers introducing uh, solo rules to their games. Uh, we have had updates to the plot and folding machine, so happy to have been contributing to that uh, to, to many of you that that liked it and enjoyed it to bring up some stories and not less importantly the Pump Companion app the thing that I've been working on the most throughout this year and in this video maybe we can talk a bit about what happened on 2.8 what's next on 2.9 and take a look at the new extra because that's gonna be very very interesting in my opinion so let's get going so, as always, every single video of mine begins with making myself smaller to the bottom right of the screen. I think somewhere around there it's gonna be fine. So, what happened in the recent release 2.8? Well, many things, and I won't be dive deeping on it either, but as you might have seen, there is an entire dedicated uh, random tables manager, so you can like bulk massively or at mass change and rename them and export them into a single file format uh, that's that's going to be very very useful for for many of you handling multiple packages so to say there have been also improvements in the search so now we have this text option search which can search for uh, text that it's either on entities as their descriptions but also as part of the of the chat so if i go to search and i don't know, look for something that i written on on some chat entry yes like this one it should also take me to the chat containing that piece of text um, then there have been also improvements to the plot notes panel including a list to the right um, I'm, I'm probably annoying a little bit here but list of characters to the bottom right as well as locations which makes it easy to to quickly access those characters and locations there's no more excuses in finding locations and entities right now so you have so many shortcuts that I I think I, I, I don't even, I, I cannot even count them, uh, but you can like pin characters. Also, you have this button here that takes you over there. Uh, so li lots of quality of life improvements all around the app. I think making it, it, it's very convenient to work with. And not less importantly, the PDF viewer improvement. So if you have like big rule books over there, um, now you are able to, not only it's been improved all around, but you can extract multiple sheets at once, like take two or three pages of sheets and send them to not only one character, but multiple of them. So you can work at this uh, sheet extractor to extract character sheets from the PDFs. Um, so pretty good. I think I'm very happy with 2.8 release. It's improved lots of areas all around the app. So it's been interesting. Um, so yes. <laughs> When it comes to 2.9, what I like about it is that there will be more improvements around those existing features, but there's something, for example, very convenient, which is the toggle last button that takes you to the previous entity or previous tab. So if you're like switching between different characters and you want to go to the one that you were looking at before, um, you can very conveniently do so. It's a minor thing, but I think it, it helps a lot because sometimes we jump from one maybe battle map and then we go to the character right and then we want to go back to the battle map um, that's gonna make it quite convenient uh, it's gonna also have a control e shortcut that you can use to jump to it uh, so that's that's one interesting improvement next there will be the links between entities i, I really like this this was uh, highly requested from you guys in the community um, you can now um, press add uh, or enter an add symbol and then an autocomplete menu will show up where you can link to another character um, so essentially then this link is clickable so you can go and again go back and forth so you can build up those uh, links between your lore entries your characters your locations and really really conveniently walk through them um, of course there is the uh, a similar feature over there in the writing area because if you're not remembering your your character names you can always press an add and um, yeah get their names uh, so with ease and of course if you hit this speaker button here you can choose them as a speaker from there it's not so different from the traditional menu and likewise um, 
if you hold and press a character in this menu you can also go to them very easily so as you see now the navigation uh, has been taking some priority in the app making it really easy to jump all around here and then in terms of gameplay uh, the app has been updated to plot and folding machine version 9 the rules of the book or the pdf and um, that makes it quite interesting because it brings some of the new plot tracks so for example if you add a new plot track in any of your new game or create a new game from scratch you will see a new list of options um, to pull from so for example story parts or scenes are very interesting new plot tracks over there um, but also and most importantly the ability for the app to invoke new nodes that are not in your list um, so far for your plot nodes to the right side the random prompts would call them at random but there was never a call for you to add something that's not on your list uh, this is something that existed since always in the pdf but well it took some time but now the app does that as well uh, and you can decide how that works actually so you can choose whether you want it to be like the pdf like adaptive like it depends on how many entries you have um, the uh, probability of pulling something new or you can set a fixed probability for for Pum companion the app to invoke a new node um, of course then it's up to you to create something new um, and about creating something new it's where i would like to talk about the new extra coming very soon well, perhaps you have met already some of the new elements in the user interface <laughs> uh, during this video, but of course, we are living in the AI era and for you techies out there and, and very AI enthusiasts, um, it is time to bring some of that um, usefulness of the AI tools into Pum Companion. Big, big disclaimer, uh, this is going to be an optional external, so if you don't want to have anything to do with AI, totally fine, not getting into the a opinion's territory. Um, also, I think it has some utilities, but as a way to enhance the player and the storyteller. And this is the role it's going to take in the app. Uh, for starters, uh, it's going to be um, an extra where you bring your own LLMs and connections to the LLM, so you trust whichever provider you trust, it's up to you. And uh, you can even connect to local models if you're full into privacy. There's going to be a full lot standard set of providers and very advanced workflows. So for you, uh, very technologists out there, you will be able to build your own workflows on the back end. Of course, considering this is the first version and it's going to be refined further, the first very important thing we'll have to deal with is the AI game setting. These are game specific attributes of the AI about how it should behave, about us telling it what we are playing and how we would like it to talk and to narrate things. Um, we can also, if we run out of ideas or to give an example, press this button to get an AI generated uh, writing style so it says the narrative should be embraced whimsical introspective tone whatever we can write here whatever we like for example we are playing band of blades um, I don't know I am comfortable with Hollywood levels of violence and action movies I don't know and the same for images since there will be a possibility for the app to generate images now uh, you can define a certain style so all of the images that you generate within a game look like each other uh, or at least share the same base ground so here you can also generate an example hey i prefer a gritty painterly art style that blends realism with a touch of dark fantasy which is super interesting because it already if you have something written up there the image style preferences are going to pull from those writing styles so you can also play around with this quite a lot of course, the AI in Pong Companion will make use of the plot unfolding machine behind screens um, to enhance its creativity and it's going to learn about your play style, um, about your um, story itself, about your plot scope and your characters. And so it's not going to be the typical, um, I don't know, decontextualized AI that is not really useful. Uh, it's, it's rather going to be having some memory um, aspect behind it. All right, to start talking about some of the AI assistance features, the most basic one to start with is a helper by writing, right? So whenever you're writing something here, um, 
whatever you're writing, write your dialogue, your scenes, anything, um, you will be able to press on this AI button and it can do four functions. Repair, which is gonna do some spell checking and grammar corrections. Enhance, which is gonna rephrase it or find a better way of saying what you wanna say. Shrink, which is gonna make a more compact version of what was written. And extend, which is going to, let's say, continue the writing or, or write some more. This can be very useful because you can write whatever you want as context, for example, um, what crew, uh, what she says, colon, right? And then you press, hey, I don't know what she says, I want some help. Um, then you can press uh, extend in this case because you want to write something new on top of it. And as you can see, um, yes, you, you will have a, like an extended version which you can clean up or work with. Um, or, or expand as you want. It's yours in the end to, for you to manipulate. So in this case, it's, we must act swiftly for a time is not on our side. The undead are relentless, etc. Uh, which takes context who is the speaker, what happened so far. Um, so it's going to be quite, quite interesting tool. And if you like, for example, here you can press, hey, um, I want to shrink this. It's too long. Um, you can press shrink and it's gonna put a more compact version of that text. So pretty cool in that sense, which also applies um, here on the text area, right? So you can, for example, say physical appearance, for example, and then you say, hey, I don't know what, what is, what does she look like? Uh, you can press here extend and again, similarly, it is going to expand with, with something. Uh, that yet you might or might not lack as an idea. In the end, we are always in control of the game. When it comes to gameplay, whenever you are generating the next scene, for example, or the next random problem in Platinum Folding Machine, and it say, hey, you locate a trace or a useful finding, uh, choose or some add something new, which is one of the new features. So we find something that's not among our existing plot nodes, so I can even come here first and generate that plot node, for example, um, by, by using AI itself. So, um, but it should generate a new useful finding over here, uh, which we're gonna send to the log for context. And we're gonna view it. So it says a forgotten battle standard from a long lost conflict rumored to bring unity and strength to those who rally under it. So as you can see, it generates the plot nodes, the image, it takes in consideration your preferences, your art style. Alternatively, as a midpoint, if you are asking a question, for example, what do we see from here? Um, and you use, I don't know, an oracle, for example, notice from the plot and folding machine, and it gives you an answer, feel someone following you, ancient and old, Interpreting this answer is also some effort, as you know, like I said, there's something we all solo players know a little bit, but if we are feeling lazy, we can always press AI interpret from here and uh, let it gives us an insight of what it can be. So it says an ancient figure clothed in tattered drag seems to shadow their movements, watching their eyes that glimmer with haunting wisdom. So essentially you could also help the, or ask the AI to help you with the interpretation, with coming up with something. And it's also a nice way to see, hey, how would you read this? Or how would you interpret this? Um, which could be also educational in a bit from one point of view. Super interestingly, uh, if you have a question and you don't know which or oracles to use, there is an AI helper with oracles. So you can just type your question over here. Like for example, here we can ask what kind of food, right? Um, and press this button and it's going to by itself use some oracles use your story and and answer that question right away so if you're not into looking for the right oracle and making this interpretation you just want to move a bit faster why not uh, use this tool which is gonna uh, directly answer that question and say hey there's dried meats um, some root vegetables that have sustained level of preservative despite the surrounding devastation so super cool, helps our narrative, helps us as players. I'm gonna use it for sure in some times or here and then. Um, I think we need to know also when to use it and when not. To show a little bit into what else it can do, it can create entities. So characters, locations or compendiums um, out of the AI support. So you can, for example, I'm gonna create here a compendium with AI representing these um, old supply cache hidden 
uh, near the village outskirts, so we can even mention it, the old supply cache we recently found. And it's gonna generate an, a, a new entity, in this case a compendium, but it could have been a character or a location if we, if we wanted to. Uh, in this case it came up with a forgotten cache of Asus, gave it a name even, and put it as a compendium entry, that means it's like a lore entry on, on the game now, and even with image. And now for a big banger feature, if we go to the main menu, we will notice that these AI tools also expand to the game creation process. So if we create a game, we will be able not only to use the oracles as we did in the past, but also AI with oracles and create each of those plot nodes, characters and locations individually um, to, to, to with using AI to make and facilitate our process by also giving and providing our own preferences. But what's cooler than that is that now you can even create an entire game using AI by describing what would you like to play if you want because you can also leave it blank and let it decide for you but let's say we want to play something um, a game based on uh, Oblivion the movie from Tom Cruise <laughs> whatever uh, we can set up the generated amount of uh, entities and plot nodes in average I'm gonna lower this value so it doesn't take so much of time then you're gonna introduce some of your preferences as we said before like which which is your preferred writing style I'm gonna leave that here it says light-hearted humor moments with introspection moments and I'm gonna generate also a random image style just to to show what it can come up with but of course this can be very very customized into what would you like to play I'm gonna also expand and let the AI use more than one oracle at a time enhancing its creativity from the plot and folding machine. Let's give it a try and I'm gonna be back in about one or two minutes I think it's taking depending on which models you have plugged. Let's take a look. All right the game generation was done it created a game called Echoes of the Abyss. <laughs> um, if we open it we notice there was an image linked to it there will be a plot scope idea so here what let's see what's this about deep beneath the surface lies the hidden realm of the abyss a labyrinth network of caves and tunnels shrouded in eternal darkness cool could be a, a good game for for what was the name game of that there's a game called heart which is pretty cool could fit on this one uh, as you can see there will be plot nodes in this case generated one universal safeguard mechanism following this whimsical colorful art style potential problems looks like a fragile hope is a problem um, useful findings can be an enigmatic chant of fortune looks like also it's taking this colorful art style um, as a reference pending questions what secrets does the exotic weapon hold looks like there's gonna be an exploration about uh, uh, an exotic weapon a uh, bunch of characters including the game master that's that's you <laughs> the savage melody and burial the boring uh, looks like there are two characters um, one location the whispering grove and compendium entries it generated two the cursed conch and the domain keeper super interesting so as you can see now you have a game uh, draft to to play from to expand to decide how you want to play it and you get to it if you enable also crystal theme it should use that image as the background so all right that was intense i did not expect and think that i would speak so much about it but there's so many other smaller features all around and as the first version i think it's going to be very useful um used responsibly so to say um but yes with that said i would love to Yes, wish you all a Merry Christmas if you celebrate it and a good time with family, time off if you have that and also a nice transition to the next year. So I'll be working on this on my free spare time as much as I can, fixing some issues and bugs and bringing some of the new cool stuff over it. So happy to have been part of this amazing solo RPG community, the Plot and Falling Machine community. This is Jensen Vars and looking forward to our next time. Bye bye.